And on one now, the Midday Magazine, which comes from Birmingham, Daytime Live. Daytime Live, actress Jean Vogt on the breadline. Frank Topping says happy birthday to the National Children's Home. It's 2-0, England's football fans return from Albania. And there's hot soul sounds from Hot House. A couple of weeks ago, you may remember, we wished a bon voyage to Billy Brewster fanzine writer and Grimsby Town fan extraordinaire who with 50 other football fans set off on a coach to follow the England team to Albania they were as interested in Enver Hodja no not Albania's nippy right winger but a 20th century revolutionary as in how well the boy Linico would play they also hoped to show Albanians the friendly face of English football well Billy's back with us today clutching his prompter prints along with fellow editor John Duncan who were accompanied how was the journey Billy did it go all right um, it was excellent. I mean, uh, the, the journey itself was uh, a bit problematical. We had uh, two breakdowns on the way there. In fact, it took us 12 hours to get from London to Dover, which was uh, something of a problem. We Even getting to Dover? Never mind Albania. Yeah, we, we spent the first night in, a, in the Daft Thameside Centre in Gravesend. <laughs> oh, that was gripping. What a place to end a journey to Albania, yeah. Gravesend. Well, any better when you got over the channel? Um, well, it went well for, for quite a while, and um, John commented at the time when we were in Gravesend that it w at least we didn't break down in the middle of Yugoslavia. Unfortunately, we did. As well? Um, yeah, so again, we spent another five or six hours uh, in, a, in a little port called Senja in Yugoslavia oh, waiting for a replacement coach. Sad. John, how were the Albanian customs? I mean, I'd imagine it would have been a bit tricky getting in there, wasn't it? No, they were, they were quite good. Much, much, uh, much easier to get through there than it is uh, to get through your average turnstile at league grounds. So I actually had to tell one of the customs blokes to search certain compartments in my bag which he hadn't looked at. All, the, all they confiscated was a, a few guidebooks and, uh, and one copy of the Financial Times, which I found <laughs> perplexing, but there you go. No Financial Times, you can't get in. That's right. How were the... I mean, did you, you were promised all these wonderful sights, Billy, over there. What, what did you get to see? Well, unfortunately, because we arrived a day late, we, we missed out the uh, Enver Hodja Light of the Party hydroelectric power station. The Atheist Museum was closed, which was unfortunate, but we did get to see the um, National Historic Museum, which is very impressive, the Skanderbeck Museum in Croya, yes. which was also... Uh, well, I'm going to be very cagey about being rude about these places, because I said that I didn't think the tractor thing was a place to go for and go to in Albania, and I got a letter. I got a letter from Jeannie Newman, who said, you're being rotten because Albania is a beautiful country and the people are friendly. And she sent me one of her holiday snaps just to prove it. Wonderful scenery of Albania, which would persuade anybody to go there. So come on, all right, I give in, Jeannie. Not all of Albania's like It's just that they didn't offer them that when They went over and led them the coach. They offered them a tractor factory. We sent you with a camera, Billy. What kind of happy holiday snaps did you come back with? Oh, various, various uh, happy snaps. Let's whiz through your family album and see what you've got. Here we are. Is this the group setting out off on their voyage? Uh, no, this is actually on the way back. We, this was the final stop, which was in a hunting lodge, which was frequented by Benito Mussolini during the Italian occupation. What did you think of Benito's taste? Was it any good? Um, the hunting lodge was very nice, yeah. Um, and that's, that's the group photo of everybody that went on the, uh, the journey. Let's including the uh, guides as well. The guides too. Let's have a look at the next one, see what there is. Ah, now this looks quite stunning. This is rather sort of a um, splendid sight. Where's this? Yeah, this is the view from the Hotel Tirana, which is, which is an excellent hotel, really nice food. This is Skenderbeck Square, which has got marvellous uh, marble coming away from a statue. It looks like an ice rink when you actually see it at night. Is it always as busy as that? Yeah, that's the rush hour. <laughs> um, <laughs> rush hour in Albania is obviously the place to be. Right, let's go on to the next page of your oldie snap book. Goodness. Yeah, wherever we went, for some reason, we, we were treated as celebrities. I mean, the Albanian people were really overwhelming in their kindness. And each time we got onto the coach, a massive crowd would accumulate within, within a matter of seconds. And this is on the day of the actual uh, full international game, the uh, 
people gathered around the coach to uh, wave us off. And so Wallace Arnold isn't obviously very big over there. It's quite rare when they see him. I've, uh, who does he play for? Uh, <laughs> typically, isn't it? It's a wonderful coach firm. Let's go on to the next, like, the next picture in your, in your family album. What have we got? Uh, well, this is in a bar um, in Tirana itself. We, we popped in to try some of the local beer uh, and ordered um, six pints of, uh, of beer to, to see the local brew. And uh, the waiter had some some kind of uh, mind blowout and brought six pints of wine <laughs> in pint glasses, as you can see there. The, the, the amazing thing was that the whole round cost £1.40. So £1.40? Very... Six pints of red wine. I'm beginning to like the hospitality of it. Ah, now this is a stunning shot. What's this? Yeah. This is the um, Albania Today Museum, um, and basically it shows off a number of the uh, economic achievements uh, made by Albania over the last few years. This is uh, the latest technology in transport what, and a bicycle? Uh, cookery. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and cookery. We were actually shown around this muse that museum by um, the manager of Partizan Tirana, who are actually top of the league in Albania at the moment. Well, so, uh, well, what was that huge sure. building that we just saw? Was that the that was the sock bit? collective. We, the what? We visited a sock collective on the way back. John had to pick up a couple of boxes of socks. A sock um, collective? Yeah. It's not the kind of thing you imagine we take to see in Britain. Look, I must ask you, actually, when we got through all the sightseeing, what about the match? We won. Yes, we did. Against all my expectations, we did, yeah. Um, I, I thought the Albanians played very well. They've got some very good players and uh, they were unlucky, really. And, and the behaviour of the fans, because there you were, you were in your coaches, you met other fans who had been over under their own steam. I mean, what was the behaviour of fans like over there? Well, some of the some of the other fans were great, um, but some of the other fans weren't so great. And the, there's a there were some sad moments for us um, as as football fans, were, and when we did see the slightly uglier side, mm. when there were, there were there were people doing salutes to the, the national anthem and, and things like that. Do you feel that you accomplished your mission by showing the better side of British football supporters? Yeah, I definitely. Know. I mean, what we did was provide an alternative for for people abroad uh, to see. That if we hadn't have gone there, then the people who didn't behave themselves would have been seen as the typical English football fan. Yeah. And we came away with the Albanians congratulating us and recognising that true football fans in England were more like us than like them. Well, I also hope that true football fans in Britain have a little bit of sympathy for, the sympathy for that gentleman known as Martin Allen, um, who found himself in the newspapers today on the headline, New Dad Allen Rocked by Fine. Instead of going on to play for his team, he rushed to the hospital to watch his wife giving birth, only to come back to be fined £1,200 by his manager, Trevor Francis, and told that his team needed him more. All I and uh, X million other fathers in Britain would say to Mr Francis was, who are you kidding? Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for joining us and let's hope that football fans as well as football supporters have a bit of the Martin Allens about them as well as a bit of the Gary Linekers. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs>